I've bought a Raspberry Pi 3. If you're not familiar with that type of device, this is a small computer designed around few chips soldered on a single circuit board. I plan to install the Raspbian operating system on that board, and there are already millions of videos showing how to do it. But I have a particular issue. As you may see, besides the board, a micro SD memory card and a power supply, I only have a laptop. No external monitor, no HDMI cable, no USB keyboard, and not even an Ethernet plug on my computer. So here is my challenge, installing Raspbian headless and wireless. Our journey will start on the official Raspberry Pi website where we can download an image of Raspbian to install. You have the choice between two images. Here, I will use the minimal image since I don't need the overhead of running a graphical layer on the headless system. I could just click on the download button to get the compressed image. And if you want, you can do it. But as of myself, I will follow a slightly more complex process because I want to ensure the authenticity of the downloaded image before installing it on my Raspberry Pi. Since the Raspberry Pi Foundation uses redirections on their website, I must first locate the real URL of the image. OK, here it is. Now let's download the image and its signature. At this point, we have two files, the compressed image file and the corresponding digital signature file. But is this sufficient to test the file authenticity? No, because GPG needs to compare the signature with the key of the signing authority. Therefore, we must import that key before going further. Stop. Do not press enter yet. Before that, you should check that you see on your terminal exactly the same number as me because anybody could have signed that file. And since you should never blindly trust what you find on the internet, I strongly encourage you to check using another source if that fingerprint is really the one corresponding to the Raspberry Pi Foundation download signing key. Once you are confident enough, you may finally add the corresponding key to your keychain. And now you can verify the image authenticity based on that key. If you see the message good signature, great, that means the file is the genuine one. By the way, pay special attention to that warning. It is just a reminder that you cannot trust that image more than the source that gave you the signing key fingerprint. This is the root of the concept of chain of trust. You trust the image because you've trust the signature. And you've trust the signature because you've trust the signing key. But you've trust the signing key because you've trust the key fingerprint. And you've trust the key fingerprint because you've trust me. Now I'm pretty sure I have the genuine Raspberry image on my computer. In a moment, we will copy that image onto the memory card. But for that, we need to know which device name is assigned by the kernel to the memory card. On my system, the memory card is known as that. As you can see, my memory card contains just one partition, it is pretty typical for a brand new card. But before going further, it's safer to ensure no partition is mounted because we will override the whole card content. 
Okay, we are now ready to copy the image onto the card. So let's do it. Finally, since in the process we have overwritten the partition table of the device, it doesn't hurt to ask to the kernel to reload it. If you have a keyboard and an external monitor to connect to a Raspberry Pi, you've done all that is needed and you are ready to boot the board from the memory card. But this is not my case. Since I'm setting up a headless system, I have to find another way to access the board. SSH is the solution. But for security reasons, SSH access is not enabled by default on Raspbian, but this can be changed just by adding a Sentinel file on the memory card. So let's mount the Raspbian boot partition on my computer to do that. Here you can see all the files on the boot partition of the Raspbian image and creating the Sentinel file to run SSH on startup is trivial. Remember, I installed a headless and wireless system. So not only I want to access the system through SSH, but I also want the Raspberry Pi to connect to my wireless network at startup. For that, we would create a wireless configuration file onto the boot partition. The first half of the file is pretty standard. Then we will add the credentials for the Raspberry Pi to connect to my Wi-Fi access point. And that's all for the Wi-Fi settings. We have now completed our specific configuration. Let's unmount the card, remove it from the card reader and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. But at this point, we still have a little problem. To access the Raspberry Pi through SSH, we will need its IP address. But how to know that since we are running a headless system? A brute force solution would try all possible addresses on the network until they find the one used by the Raspberry Pi. But I wanted to show you a more subtle solution. For that, you will need the TCP dump utility. That tool is used to capture all traffic that can be seen on your computer network interfaces. Here we will specifically look for the traffic related to the DHCP and ARP protocols. DHCP is a protocol used by a device to obtain an IP address on your network. And ARP is used to inform the different hosts of the network of the owner of a given IP address. In addition to the TCP dump utility, to reduce the noise, I will add an extra filter to consider only broadcast messages. Let's now boot the Raspberry Pi and see what happens. And after a few seconds, bingo! I can see a device, presumably my Raspberry Pi, looking for a DHCP server. Then I see the DHCP server using the R protocol to check if a given IP address is available. And I see now the device signaling it has accepted a DHCP offer and in its turn checking if the address was really available. 
And finally, the device is advertising itself as the new owner of that IP address. I'm pretty confident this device is my Raspberry Pi, but there is a slight chance all this traffic could be originated from another new device on the network. So let's check that to be sure. Okay, that's official now. I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi. And if I try the IP address show command, I will retrieve the information we've collected from the network. And we've almost done for this video. But before leaving you, I cannot insist enough. You must change the default password of your Raspberry Pi. Let's disconnect now from the board and reconnect using the new password. Okay, it works. Now it's your turn to play. You may, for example, turn that board into an HTTP server or an IoT device or anything else. The limit is your imagination. So don't hesitate to share your ideas in the comment section below. As of myself, I still have some work to do. If you remember, I said I bought a Raspberry Pi. Well, in fact, I bought several of them to build a computing cluster, but that will be another story. So subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss that.